In 2002, Thor Park unveiled Colossus, the first ever roller coaster to go upside down 10 times, breaking a world record. The ride was manufactured by Intamin and would become the first of several 10 inversion models that they would unveil around the world. Colossus, however, was the prototype. Following that addition, they made updates and revisions to the layout to modernize it. We saw new ones pop up in China in 2013, Rome in 2014, Russia 2017, Turkey 2019, and then finally the other one of this 10 inversion model that I have experienced, sick at Flamingoland, also in the UK. And more so than most roller coaster models, the 10 inversion layout exists as a gimmick. These rides are marketing ploys for parks to say, we have a roller coaster that goes upside down 10 times. And then they can show everyone this crazy shot of this coaster going upside down four times back to back. And people are like, whoa, that looks crazy. I'm gonna go buy a day ticket so I can experience it. And so this off the shelf model was created for parks that maybe don't have as high of a budget who still wanna put in something that is high thrill and will draw attendance. Interestingly, unlike some of Intamin's other popular models, this one didn't quite quite take off to the same level. We don't even have any in North America. The closest you get is in Guatemala. There is a variation of this that has eight inversions instead of 10, but currently the record for most inversions in the US is less than 10. It's still current at Kennywood with nine. And I imagine that's because most people who experienced one of these said, you know, it's an interesting concept, but execution is not the best. It is the definition of a ride that looks cool, but isn't as fun to actually ride. Not saying it's bad, but it definitely has its issues. So let's dive into them, talk about what works and what does not. So let's start by going over some stats. Colossus sits at a height of 98 feet, top speed 45 miles per hour, 2,789 feet of track. And those numbers are gonna be slightly less than what we have with the new revised layout. When Intamin updated the model, they raised the height to 108 feet, so 10 feet higher, top speed 53 miles per hour, so that's eight miles per hour faster, and then 2,870 one feet of track or 82 feet longer but their layouts are more or less the same you have a vertical loop an airtime hill cobra roll double corkscrew a quadruple heartline roll and then one final heartline roll but going the opposite direction into the brake run i first experienced a 10 inverting coaster back in 2018 with colossus at thorpe park i only got to do it once which was in the back car I returned to Thorpe Park in 2023 and got to experience it then in the front row. And then on the same trip, got to do several rides in on sick. And you know, thinking back to my first ride on Colossus, prior to riding it, I had not heard great things. The biggest complaint was that it is a rough, uncomfortable experience. During both of my rides on this, I did not think it was that bad. Like, especially when I sat up front, it wasn't even rough. Maybe I just have a higher tolerance for it, or maybe it's because I was keeping my head forward so it wasn't banging up against over the shoulder restraints. I can see how this ride would be uncomfortable for people. Certainly those four inversions in a row are not for everyone, but just with how those trains ride on the track, there wasn't any major shuffling or banging back and forth. I know that Thorpe Park is currently doing some work to retrack the coaster, which certainly is appreciated. I'm not gonna say no to that, but like when you compare it especially to Saw right next door, that ride is legitimately rough. This is at least tolerable. If there's a big downside to it, it is of course the over the shoulder restraints that I mentioned. These things are bulky and certainly make you feel like you're in place. But I think about how Intamin was able to swap out some of those original restraints on Intamin 305, Maverick, Storm Runner, and replace them with that softer material. I feel like that is an upgrade that Colossus could absolutely benefit from. And I think even more so than the profiling changes, the biggest difference you'll see with Model A versus Model B is a complete redesign with the trains. The 10 inversion coasters like Sick at Flamingoland have lap bars. You feel very open and exposed when riding on this vehicle. When you first pull them down, in a way that kind of look like Skyrush's lap bars. However, while those sit on your thighs, this sits actually at your waist. So it's definitely more comfortable, at least for most of the layout. I do think that those four inversions back to back with a lap bar can be kind of a lot. When you're wide open, as you're rotating around, your body's just like hanging to the side. You're left in an awkward position until you level out. I almost feel like with the over the shoulder restraints on those four back-to-back -back inversions on Colossus, you at least feel more contained and your whole body isn't just dangling upside down. So for the most part, I thought the lap bars were an upgrade. I gotta imagine that for the public, it probably spooks them a little bit hearing that this roller coaster goes upside down 10 times. And what? There's no over the shoulder bar? There's still plenty of people that don't realize you can go upside down with just a lap bar. 
But that's the big difference as far as restraints go. These two coasters also have fundamentally different themes. Colossus has this very celestial vibe. Out of the big roller coasters at Thorpe Park, this probably has the loosest theme, but at least the plaza and the area around the coaster looks nice. Over at Flamingoland, Sick is still relatively new. It only recently opened back in summer 2022. They decided to theme the ride after a brand of clothing, Sick Silk. They're the sponsor of the ride, and so there's a bunch of merch in the gift shop for them. And when you get up to the station, it it's a total party. They are blasting EDM, different songs every time you enter. There's lights and it's just really cool. I liked this theme more than Colossus's. So let's talk about the core of this layout. Does it work as a ride experience? And I'll say right away, Sick has a much more exciting start. You get pulled up to the top as quick as possible, very reminiscent of Skyrush's lift. It doesn't even compare to that slow climb that Colossus does. So already a great improvement on Intamin's part, but it didn't stop there. The original start of Colossus is this long drawn out turn that kind of ramps downward to the left. The modern 10 loopers all have like a formal drop that Colossus was really missing. It's not anything crazy, that's not really the point of this ride, but I enjoy kind of getting whipped to the side, it feels like you build up more speed. And these rides waste no time heading straight into your first of 10 inversions of vertical loop. And I actually grayed out a little bit coming out of this element. An airtime hill immediately follows this vertical loop, that's the only like non-inverting element that takes place during this layout. It was some really nice floater, good pop there. And before we get into the Cobra roll, I gotta talk about first the mist that is on sick. There are three spots on this ride where riders get misted and it is just way too much. It is like a full on water effect. You get legitimately wet. At least when I went, I thought they needed to dial it back because you get hit with it before the Cobra roll. And then after the Cobra roll, when you're diving back into the tunnel, you hit it a second time and then entering the final breaks into the station, one last time, more mist. It was pretty over the top. The Cobra roll I thought was fine, not anything super whippy. I actually really enjoy these two corkscrews that immediately follow. The transition into them is just so fluid. I thought they really worked. Now, the four inversions back to back. In my opinion, it's too much. It is very dizzying doing the same motion over and over and over again. I think this element is here purely for the gimmick and not because it's actually fun to experience. Like I think about when you walk up to Sick at Flamingoland, you can get this shot right here, right? Visually, it's amazing. But when you're actually riding it, it's not fun, at least for me. Now that's not saying that Intamin did a bad job with the Heartline roll, but when you do the same motion four times in a row. It's the repetitiveness that makes it uncomfortable. If you dial back to one or two, totally fine. But in its current state, when you come out of that final roll, you're like confused and lightheaded. I think there's a reason that most roller coasters don't do this. I think it's cool that Intamin just went for it and did something different. And I think it's an absolute win in terms of the visuals, but from a rider perspective, it honestly felt like a cop out to get the inversion record. Like I think about the Smiler, that thing has 14 inversions and each one of those elements is different. You don't get sick and tired of going upside down. Here, you absolutely do. In my opinion, this is by far the weakest part of the ride. You would easily have a better, more enjoyable experience if you just had two of these back to back. I think hitting the brake run, I was just like, wow, I'm glad that's over and I need to stand up, walk around, drink some water. I don't know if this is a roller coaster I'd particularly want to like marathon. Granted, I still ended up walking away from sick doing it, you know, like four times, I think, during our visit. It was my favorite roller coaster in the park. Colossus was not my favorite roller coaster at Thorpe Park. It's a neat novelty experience for what it is, but it's never gonna be a coaster that I'm gonna be running back to. Which is a shame because it had me in the first two thirds. I was completely on board with it, but I'm not gonna lie, they lost me in the ending. So let's talk final scores. Colossus for me is like a solid five. I'm relatively neutral about it. I don't love it, but I also don't really dislike it. I'll still ride it when I go and maybe I'll consider a re-ride. Looking at Sick, I think the upgrades they made are definitely nice. It also, just presentation wise, looks a lot better. And compared to everything else at Flamingo Land, this is the clear winner. So I'd say Sick is probably a seven. Now let's say that you took away two of those inversions at the end. Suddenly, I think that ride would be an eight. But then, would the public be as interested in it? For marketing purposes, it sounds a million times better to say our ride goes upside down 10 times than our ride goes upside down eight times. So it is what it is, but I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments below if you've experienced one of Intamin's 10 inversion roller coasters. What do you think of them? If you agree with the points that I brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, be sure to post that down below and stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios and I'll see you next time.